Remember when I talked about pandas being a baby between Excel and SQL? Well, we spent most of the time looking at examples that align closely with Excel, but the merge and join functionality is right out of a SQL playbook. We are going to need to merge data frames frequently, especially when we pull data from different sources or different tables. Let's start with looking at two of the most popular ways to merge data, concat and append. The concat method is called directly on the pandas object, which is why you see the pd dot before it. It will combine or concatenate two or more data frames together, turning them into one data frame object. We will use this method whenever we have two data sets containing the same columns, but different rows of data. So for example, let's say we had these two different data frames, DFA and DFB. And so it has the same columns, but different rows of data. Concat takes just the two data frame names as the input. You can use square brackets or a Python list. So here we would run the pd.concat and give it dfa and dfb. Depending on the order of the data frames we pass, your output will have one stacked on top of the other in the final object. So passing dfa before dfb returns a different data frame ordering than dfb to dfa. So here we have it. dfa is stacked on top of dfb. This option is super easy and straightforward as long as the data frames have identical column names. Everything looks good uh, except for the indexes. Since we didn't explicitly set an index, index for the data frames we created, pandas created default indexes, but sometimes when you concatenate, they will be the same for both. When we concatenated the data frames, the indexes were concatenated too. So this can be a serious problem if we want to access rows by an index. So let's look at an example. Now let's say I had some raw data here and I created a data frame from it. And I also had some raw data and then I wanted to concatenate these PD concat and I'll pass it df1, df2. So you notice the indexes are duplicated. And this is going to be an issue. Since we didn't explicitly set an index for the data frames we created, pandas created default indexes for the two data frames, but it created the same default indexes for both. When we concatenated the data frames, the indexes were concatenated too since the ignore index parameter is false by default. In other words, pandas will keep the indexes of the original data frames and add them to each other. To override this and get a fresh index, we can just set it equal to true or run the reset index after you concatenate. So let's say the df new, we ran a reset index and we're actually going to drop equals true. So this won't create an entirely new one. It will reset what we have. And you'll see this now resets it zero to one. And again, the only other way we could have done this is in the concat method. We said ignore index equals true. And we look at this. And this will reset it in one line. So to recap, we pass a list of the data frames to add to each other and then save it as a new variable to do something fancy with it. In an earlier section, we looked at the append method and is nearly identical, except it is called directly on a data frame object. So in the concat, we call PD concat and pass it in a list, whereas an append will run on the data frame itself. So if we were to do this, we are appending them and we get the same results. It's just appending DF2 to DF1. And again, if we wanted to flip that, we could go vice versa. 
and it just rotates it. And we're going to get the exact same issues with the index. So we can also save this and then df new reset index drop equals true. And we have the reset index. The argument is just the other data frame we want to append. It then adds the rows and we can save it in a new variable since it doesn't overwrite the original data frame. The append method also takes an ignore index parameter if we wish to reset the index values. Wow, you're becoming a true data wizard. Think of all the ways you can mix and match and manipulate your data using Pandas currently. We have just the last few sections to go over before we get into the heart of our projection model.